Okay, board members, we will be getting out of here on time. So we've got a couple couple things uh, left. So let's start our board member reports with uh, Member Izumi. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, just wanted to say that uh, uh, it was a great honor to be on the Classified Employee of the Year selection team yeah. again this year with uh, Member Hawkins, who did a fantastic job, uh, you know, leading us. And so um, that was. It's always one of the most rewarding things I do here uh, with the board. And uh, secondly, I, I, I gave a speech uh, to the Seroptimus uh, Scholarship uh, Luncheon here in Sacramento, where I was able to talk about the recommendations of the Student Success Task Force. And I would like to, you know, point out that I mean the members of the general public, when they hear about the recommendations, are extremely supportive of uh, the, those recommendations because it makes a lot of common sense to them. And so I think that that's uh, something that uh, you know, where we tend to talk inside our family. Sometimes, you know, when you go out there to talk with the general public, you know, it, there's going to be a lot of, you know, uh, solid support for these recommendations out there. And I think that we need to get that message out, you know, beyond our family. Member Ramos. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, I've been busy, uh, as you know, from this morning's presentations, uh, mainly on the development of the awards program for sustainability. Um, I've also been active uh, at the President's encouragement on the search committee for our new chancellor. But what I'd like to do, if I may, just very briefly, is focus um, this, this uh, set of comments at this time on a series of uh, emails that I've circulated to members of this board around uh, some of the concerns that I have had personally uh, regarding uh, policing actions at various California higher education institutions. Namely, we saw a very disturbing pepper spraying activity at UC Davis. Uh, we, we are all well aware and disturbed about the uh, pepper spraying activity at uh, Santa Monica College that happened uh, recently. And I note that today at Cal State Northridge there is an Occupy and Hunger Strike a movement commencing that very very easily, I think, could lead to some kind of a police intervention. So um, I'm mindful, as we all are, I think, uh, that President Udoff and the UC system, following the Davis um, incident, um, uh, moved swiftly to develop a review committee, that that review committee has now just, uh, as of Friday, released recommendations for the entire system on ways to avoid excessive use of force. Uh, by the um, UC police and, and other allied law enforcement agencies, particularly in instances where students or others are exercising their First Amendment right to speech. And I think as a member of this board, I personally would like to implore other members to support some effort by the chancellor and his staff to conduct a, a, either an impartial or a, at least some kind of an informed review of how, how we as a system can encourage our member districts and our campuses uh, to be mindful of the need for more reasonable uh, practice and maybe the development of some <coughs> kind of a unified uh, policy that we could embrace uh, that would at least uh, encourage, uh, let's say strongly encourage our, our member institutions to be mindful of the need for balance between the right of the citizenry in an American uh, legal and political reality to express free speech and the need to maintain order. So I don't have a kind of a pre-envisioned notion of what this might look like. I might want to defer to the chancellor uh, to give his thoughts on what kind of review process we might employ that would indeed be effective and inspiring and, and, and that would in encourage response that we would want from the uh, system leadership. But I'm concerned about this because I do not think that we have seen the last of these um, concerns in light of the economy, in light of many of the uh, <coughs> student uh, access issues that we've seen, uh, folks not being able to get courses. It's a time of frustration and <coughs> misunderstanding. And I, I suspect, I hope I'm wrong, that there will be other incidents that we may be uh, quite discomforted to have to face in the absence of some kind of a formal review of this type. So I don't know that now is the time to discuss this in depth, but I would look probably to the chancellor for his guidance on what would be an appropriate response systematically to these concerns. Member Malumad. Um, at the end of April, I attended the uh, Student Senate General Assembly, and uh, I'm just proud to tell the board that they're doing a great job. I feel like I'm the eyes and ears of the board, and I think you'd be very happy to see how things are done. Um, I've also uh, seen the growth of people who are active in that organization, 
and I actually expect many of those people to be future leaders in our state or wherever they end up. Um, and I also want to compliment President Feliciano. I've seen him grow tremendously. He runs a great meeting, a large meeting, over three days, and he will have very large <coughs> shoes to fill. So happy and sorry to see you go. Member Yang. Um, over the past couple of months, I attended a um, uh, SSTF roundtable along with the Chancellor and Member um, Storm um, to discuss the um, implementation also what's going to be happening from now on with, with some students and different key holders to broaden their understanding of the SSTF. I also um, was able to stop at the purchasing conference put up by the foundation in San Diego. Um, they did a great job, putting up a great conference. Um, and uh, Keith is not here at the moment, but um, she, her and her team did a great job. Along with that, I went to um, a few of the student senate meetings, as well as the GA, as well as a, um, book, a hearing on 1456, the Senator Lewin South and um, a press conference with um, the president, as well as um, Member Storm and Chancellor Scott. And I would like to echo um, the same concern I have for the um, that member um, Ramos brought up. Mem Vice President Baca. Well, I've been here and there, but I think I'll send you an email on that. But um, I do want to bring up two things. One is uh, uh, Bobby McDonald and I continue to work in the LA Orange County area on various veterans related activities. And the other thing is that there will be a, a, a FET summit this fall. Uh, Vice Chancellor Michalowski and, and the Faculty Association will be working on that. And so we'll be getting more information as, as uh, things uh, develop. Member Berg. Um, I've, been bu I've been very busy with the Chancellor, an uh, interim Chancellor search at City yes. College. As, we, as you know, we, we have a vacancy temporarily. However, I am happy to say that I just got news that it appears that Chancellor Griffin's success, uh, surgery was very successful. They were able to remove the entire brain tumor, which is unusual, and he's recovering nicely. Very good. Yeah, it's, good it's good news. Member McDougall. Member Belinsky. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had the good fortune, I guess, of attending the state, uh, and uh, Dr. Baca also was there, uh, State Academic Senate uh, Spring Plenary. and. Uh, it was kind of nice this year that there was this connection between the spring plenary of the faculty and the CIO conference chief instructional officers. And a number of people from the uh, state chancellor's office came and did presentations, which were excellent because it's getting the word out. Uh, on Saturday, they do a resolutions day, you may know, and uh, take a stance statewide on some issues. And I'd like to just comment on a few of those because I think they're of importance. Uh, one resolution that was passed was about financial aid, uh, that they support legislation and policy directives that limit need-based financial aid packages to public and private nonprofit colleges only. And I thought that was an, a very effective statement for the Senate to continue to pursue. Uh, they took opposition to Senate Bill 1550, the right bill, because they feel that it would create tiers of learning and that that's not appropriate in the community college system. They're supporting the middle class scholarship, AB 1501 Perez. Uh, the librarians came through, as we know, to say that we definitely want to be involved in the student success task force, and that was endorsed. Um, there was a strong statement about the, four, the 1440 degrees and needing to continue to track, be involved, and get data over the next five years about how it's working. Um, and one that caught my attention because of a presentation here last time on athletics was I did not realize that the LAO had recommended defunding athletic programs in the community college system, and they took a very strong position against that and were curious as to why the LAO would even get involved in making such comments. Uh, they took a position against the governor about cutting Cal Works because it's so essential to our students. Um, they're very much in step with maintaining academic progress, satisfactory academic progress for the Bob Fee waiver. And uh, the, the last one that caught my attention was about registration priorities uh, and doing some research about where out-of-state and international students really fit in. 
The only other couple of things I'd like to just comment on is I've had the opportunity now to read the Little Hoover Commission report, and given the nature of the report on the community colleges and the depth of information that's provided, I would hope that the presentation in March is not the end of our conversation about the Little Hoover report, particularly the, the emphasis on governance and the governance of mm -hmm. the community college system. I think that needs more talk. And the other thing that I did was in March participated in the development workshop for the accrediting commission of the community and junior colleges, which accredits our 112 colleges. And just to acknowledge the fact that uh, the Commission has started the process for reviewing the accreditation standards. The first public forum was in March. I was really caught off guard by how few people came to that public commission to comment, um, or public forum. The, the next forum is June 6th at South San Francisco Marriott, uh, starts at 9 in the morning. I'd hope more people would come and make comments because this is a, a two-year process and there will be changes in the standards by 2014. Thank you. Member Hawkins. Thank you. I'd like to also thank Lance for participating in the selection process. That was an eye-opening experience for me. Couldn't have been done without the support of Jerry Griffin. I mm -hmm. want to really thank her for that. Thank yeah. you, Jerry. Uh, also, I look forward to next year. We'll, we'll, with the continued foundation support, we'll, I'll look forward to those awards next year. Also, I'm sure you'll keep us plenty busy with the yes. Chancellor's search. <laughs> yes, and, and, and good job today in your inaugural award presentation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Member Storm. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the spring semester is always busy for the student, and it uh, always goes by quickly. So. Um, in March, I chaired the uh, Board of Governors Student Affairs Committee. We are still developing a direction in which we're gonna go. Um, I also attended the SSCCC meeting, and I also attended um, a Student Success Task Force Roundtable with Member Yang and with Chancellor Scott um, and with students in San Francisco, and it was uh, funded by the Rappaport Foundation. Um, in April, I came back to the Student Senate meeting I also attended the press conference for AB 1456, where I also made a presentation. Um, I attended the SSCCC General Assembly the last week of April, where I was the keynote speaker on Friday. And the theme for that conference was educating heroes. So um, it was quite inspirational to see the number of heroes that attended the conference. We were well over 500. Um, that Saturday, I attended each of the 10 region meetings to provide information about the Board of Governors Student Affairs Committee. Um, and I wanted to give them information about the purpose and the next meeting time, which will be June 1st from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Then um, on May 3rd, I attended another Student Success Task Force Roundtable with um, community organizations, and Chancellor Scott was also there, and that was in Oakland. Um, when we leave here today, I'm going to an advocacy training session that's hosted by the Campaign for College Opportunity here um, in Sacramento, and we'll also be going to the Capitol to, uh, I guess, see some, some of the legislatures and learn how to speak with them. And then I also have had my work on the uh, Chancellor Search Committee which I appreciate that appointment. Thank you very much. Very good. Uh, I just want to uh, really uh, say thank you to both of our student members because, I mean, they are just so actively engaged. The times I'm up here, they're, they're both here, you know, for whatever event it is. So, so I think that is uh, uh, tremendous to, to see, very commendable, and adds a lot uh, a, a really important voice uh, to this uh, board. Member Ramos, vis-a-vis uh, -vis your request, I hear your uh, uh, concerns. My own opinion on that is that our chancellor and chancellor's staff have so many things on their plate right now, whether it be 1440, whether it be our task force, the myriad of other things that we have uh, assign them. I would be, for one, as a board member, would be very reticent to ask them to launch a review, investigation, whatever it 
it may be at this point be, because we do know that the, these issues are, are handled by local boards, local uh, colleges. Having said that, uh, I would be open to and probably would be, agree with you, this board probably ought to be informed of what our responsibilities are as a first step. And, and while I, I, I know that this is locally handled, what is the relationship between the Board of Governors and those issues? So I, for one, would be willing to agendize that as a, as a first uh, step. I know you're not going to be at next meeting, so if it's okay with you, I would be happy to agendize that for September because I think it's important that you be here uh, for that since you bring these these up. Well, th may I remark, Please. remark um, briefly? Um, thank you for that consideration. And uh, I just want to clarify, I'm, I'm not trying to invoke an investigation. I think what I'm trying to do is invoke a conversation and an exploration of what best practice might look like in this area and what would be the appropriate role yeah. for us in an advisory Context, right. not a policing context. Pardon right. the pun. Uh, to 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 be clear as a board to our constituencies that we look to strike a balance in the relationship between First Amendment rights and appropriate, you know, police action when that's called for to maintain order. So, my suggestion was really not to engage the chancellor or the staff in a considerable time burn. It was more to seek the count the council and the advice of the chancellor in terms of what sort of approach or protocol might work um, that would speak to our desire to strike that balance without it becoming an undue burden on himself or the, the system. Right. So, so I think to do nothing would be inappropriate for us because my suspicion is that we will see more, not less of this in the future. And uh, I think in the nature of our public responsibility, it would be odd for us not to have a position on it. Well. Uh, I, as I said, I think the first step would probably be opening that conversation by understanding what our what our role is here. Sure. And if there is one, then I think we ought to have that have that uh, uh, discussion. I know that I, you know, you and I may differ on whether we should be making a statement on that but we agree we ought to open I think the conversation so right. Jan and Chancellor well uh, I will be happy to bring this up at cabinet uh, we uh, do have an emergency management uh, program uh, I believe that uh, Vice Chancellor uh, Bruckman uh, is in charge of that and and we send out things about uh, emergency management whether it has to do with an earthquake or whatever uh, I think all of you are fully aware that the governance situation in community colleges is different from what it is in University of California and California State University in the sense that uh, the for instance uh, President Udolph the chancellors of the system answer uh, to President Udolph and uh, the presidents of CSU answer to Chancellor Reed. Uh, that's not true of those who are the CEOs of uh, community colleges. They answer to a local board of trustees, and uh, we can send out, uh, if, we, if we will discuss this, uh, uh, I would not like to launch an investigation of any college uh, unless I'm given the legal authority to do so. Now, occasionally, when a college goes bankrupt, uh, then it does, the legislation does require that the chancellor appoint a special trustee. Uh, and so I don't mind uh, a discussion of this as long as there's an understanding uh, of what the limitations of the chancellor's office is. Uh, I. Uh, uh, I, you know, I very often get letters addressed to me, uh, even involving student grades, uh, thinking that I can simply send out a directive and correct it. And uh, I have to inform people that that's not quite within my authority or power in some ways, given the fact that it's 112 colleges and 2.6 million students, I guess I'm a little bit glad that uh, that's true. 
but uh, I, I don't mind uh, having a discussion about it. I just would like for us to understand uh, something about <coughs> my role uh, or the role of the chancellor's office and uh, how very sensitive local boards of trustees are about uh, uh, my exercising authority beyond that which I possess. So uh, that's all I would say about it, but I'd be glad to open the discussion. And, and as I said, we do have an emergency management program, and perhaps we can include something in that program about this matter. But we'll talk and talk about it. <coughs> uh, I, the, I always rely very heavily on the vice chancellors. Yep. And, uh, despite the fact that I'm a rather vocal person, uh, you, I'm not quite as authoritative as sometime I might appear. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'll do that, Member Ramos. Yeah, I would, I would just say in closing my final thought, um, I, I don't think that it's necessary for me to be involved in the discussion. I would frankly prefer for it to happen sooner than later. I think deferring it could um, be problematic because there may be other incidents that would occur between now and, say, a meeting in October. So if there's a willingness to agendize the matter, and again, it's, I want to underscore, I'm not looking for a, a, an investigation. I'm not looking for us to assert, assert any kind of powers that we don't have. It's simply to be sure that there's a common mindset among the members of this board in relationship to the chancellor and his staff about um, our moral authority to encourage, uh, you know, a balance. I think if someone were to be killed or seriously injured at one of these um, uh, c conflicts because of the excessive use of force and we had not had this conversation, I would feel quite uncomfortable with that. Whatever whatever the realities of the divisions of authority are between us and the local authorities. From a public perception standpoint, I think from a moral standpoint, um, I think there would be a lot of questions raised about um, our relationship to that incident if we had not been mindful in light of the context we're operating in of some need for clarity and some need for messaging, uh, whether the districts and the leadership at the local level uh, take that advice and counsel and encouragement is really up to them. I understand that, but I would prefer for us to have at least the opportunity to have a unified voice on our desire to strike the balance that I'm looking to strike here. And if others disagree, that's fine. I'd just like to have the conversation. Fair enough. We have a request to address the board. Uh, Kevin Feliciano, Student Senate. morning still. Okay. <laughs> um, this is my last regularly scheduled appearance uh, before the Board of Governors um, as President of the Student Senate, so I just wanted to say a couple things, um, not just on behalf of the Student Senate, but um, on my behalf as well. Um, it's been an honor and privilege to serve as the President of the Student Senate for California Community Colleges, which does represent the 2.6 million community college students um, in the state of California. Um, today is actually an interesting day for me where it marks um, the end of my involvement in local student government. Uh, this is, today is our last uh, associated students meeting at Ohlone College, which is the college I attend. Um, you know, I've been part of that student government for four years, and so I'm sending it here with you guys. Um, but you know, I also wanna, wanna say that that's, that's where my roots are, um, and that's where, where my thoughts are as well. Um, after four years of service be, um, at the local level, and then my year of service here at the state. Um, tomorrow, my, my term as student trustee for the Olympia Community College District ends um, after a two-year term, um, which is also my birthday. So um, great birthday presents for me, right? Um, and I will be transferring to CSU East Bay in, in the fall. I just want to do a couple of quick thank yous. Um, thank you to the over 30 senators that have served on the Student Senate this year. Um, in any student organization, we do have turnover. Um, sometimes we feel the Student Senate, we have more than our fair share of turnover. Um, but you know, we're, we're, we're happy with whoever we get and, and we work um, our hardest to make sure we represent the students. Um, special thanks to our liaisons at the Chancellor's Office, Vice Chancellor Michalowski and her staff, um, Dean uh, Senor Ortiz Mercado and uh, Julie Moore and Kimberly Cortijo and probably other people I've forgotten so I should stop there. Um, uh, the President of the California Community College Student Affairs Association, Carlos Maldonado. Um, our liaisons at the Academic Senate, President Michelle Pilati and Executive Director Julie Adams. Our system partners of the League. Um, as Scott Lay and his staff, FAC, President Fish, and Executive Director Lightman, and all of our partners in Consultation Council, which involves C's and O's and other acronyms that I've yet to learn. 
um, and outside members of the legislature and our other student groups, um, our student trustee organization headed by President Kenner, our student president organization by President Trinidad, our regional leaders council, um, chairs Smathers and Woolridge, and the caucuses of the student senate, um, the black caucus headed by President Hurd, and the spectrum caucus, which is our LGBT caucus um, headed by uh, Senator Saltalamakia. Um, I'd like to thank Chancellor Scott and all of the vice chancellors and their staff, which I've had the pleasure of working with this year. Um, and obviously the members of the Board of Governors, uh, specifically those on the Student Affairs Committee, Member Storm, Member Yang, and Dr. Malumed, um, for all of the strong support that they've given the Student Senate this year at all of our events, at all of our meetings, um, something that really shows um, the Board's commitment to the students of the state. Um, in July, I hope to bring you our annual report. Uh, I don't think we've ever done an annual report to the Board of Governors, but I'm hoping as one of my last uh, hurrahs in the next seven weeks to put something together for you guys, um, which would include an in introduction uh, to my successor, which we will be electing um, right before your next meeting. So we will see you next meeting. Yeah, but yeah. I won't be president anymore, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, I guess I could still make public comment, huh? You sure can. <laughs> Um, but you know, as a personal note, best of luck to all of you and to the system. I certainly think that this is uh, the greatest system of higher education in the world. Um, you all know my story, I'm a high school dropout and all this other stuff. And, uh, I'm sure you've all learned a lot about me this year and random testimonies about suicide prevention and, and student success task force. Um, but without this system, I would not be the person that I am today. So um, I really want to thank uh, you guys as, as you know, the, the the image of this system and the, the stewards of this system. Um, and I really want to thank uh, my mom and my family um, for all of the support they've given me and all my friends. Um, as selfish as that sounds, um, without, I know, I'm sorry, I laughed last sentence. Um, and again, thank you for the opportunity to be at these meetings and represent the students of our system. I hope you continue to support the students of our system uh, the way that you do. And uh, Chancellor Scott, congratulations on your retirement. I feel like I'm kind of retiring too, but um, sort of not at the same time. So good luck to you and your family as you move forward. Yeah. <laughs> Ke Ke Kevin, let me, since we're out of time, let me just express for the board a, a, a great thank you to you and your service and wish you nothing but the best in the future. And you'll be here next month. Yeah. So we can all say it, <laughs> say it, say it again. And that's good, good news for us. But th thank you for everything you've done. <laughs> Members, it is 12 o'clock, meeting adjourned. <laughs>